First tonight, team coverage of breaking news, a police pursuit that started in Massachusetts and went through Rhode Island. Mass State Police have identified the man taken into custody shortly after the chase ended just over the Rhode Island border in North Stonington, Connecticut. He's 36-year-old Ian Grant of Dartmouth. This is a booking photo Target 12 obtained of an arrest two years ago. Tonight, he's being held as a fugitive from justice. And this is video from a scene on 195 in Westport where Mass State Police say he drove at troopers who were trying to stop him. After he fled from police in New Bedford, he was later spotted again in Jamestown, and Rhode Island State Police pursued him down Route 1 through Charlestown and Westerly and into Connecticut, where he was finally stopped. And tonight, we've learned Grant is a person of interest in this fire at his home in Dartmouth earlier this morning. We begin our team coverage with 12 News reporter Alexandra Leslie in North Stonington, Connecticut. Law enforcement believed Ian Grant was armed, and Connecticut State Police confirmed that was the case, but they were working to obtain search warrants to look into his truck and see how many firearms he had and what kinds of weapons were in the truck. With that in mind, getting Grant to a stopping point was crucial for police. We're told once he crossed state lines, that's exactly what happened. Rhode Island State Police's tactical team began engaging with Grant, but we're told they did use tear gas and pepper spray to lure him out of his vehicle. Police say in order to even get Grant to where they apprehended him, they used what's called a pit maneuver. The police cruiser or the, the trooper officer uh, uses techniques to uh, make the vehicle go into a certain direction to stop them, to prevent them from continuing to flee from uh, police. The Rhode Island, Rhode Island tactical team uh, were, were the ones that actually made contact with uh, Mr. Grant. As we've reported, police say this chase started in New Bedford, but we've also learned about incidents that Grant may have been connected with in Dartmouth. I'm Anita Buffoni, live on Prospect Street in Dartmouth, right outside Ian Grant's home, where a fire broke out earlier this morning. As you can see, the home significantly damaged by those flames. We now know that Grant is a person of interest in that case. A house fire on Prospect Street in Dartmouth early Wednesday morning, now connected to the suspect who led police on a chase through three states. State police radio conversation 12 News obtained through Broadcastify shines light on what took place. In Fall River, Westport area, a vehicle fled after shots fired by police on Route 195. The area of Route 195 vehicle fled on 195. This video showing the scene in Westport on 195 near Route 88, Massachusetts State Police combing the area after the pursuit began. The chase ending in Connecticut. Before the chase took place, the fire chief says Grant was seen in front of his home on Prospect Street when the fire broke out in a white pickup truck. He stopped, uh, gave a glance over, and I had questioned him if he wanted to just stick around and we probably would like to talk to him or he could talk to the police. Um, of believing that was his house. That's when the chief says he drove off. This isn't the first run in with the law for Grant. Court documents show there is an active criminal case against Grant who was charged with assault and battery in 2020. A woman says he met him on a dating app. Then, after deciding to break up with Grant, documents show he became enraged, slapped, and bit her. This just one piece of his violent criminal past. Now, Target 12 reviewed those court documents, and in that assault and battery case in 2020, Grant allegedly told that woman, quote, I should bite your cheek off. We have more details on his criminal past on our website, WPRI.com. For now, live in Dartmouth, I'm Anita Buffoni, 12 News.